Welcome to the Scale Up Valley podcast, where we bring the best founders and investors to help you scale our business from 1 million to 1 trillion. Today's guest is João Ventura, the founder and CEO at Sling Up. João, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Uh, first, thank you for this invitation. Um, I am eager to talk about uh, you, about the Latin ecosystem, and a little about my journey also. Absolutely. Uh, with, with a lot of pleasure. And, uh, and people will understand also that you have a lot of amazing numbers to share, not to, not to mention, as you said, uh, your own career that is uh, quite unique. And, uh, and for the ones who didn't have yet the chance to, to get to know you, um, who, who is Joel? And let us know more uh, about uh, the why and uh, a little bit of your career until you, you decided to, found, to, to, to found uh, Sling. Um, okay, so originally I um, did law, uh, but I, uh, I I was not good at that. Now I can go back and see that uh, it was not my passion and I was not very good at that. Uh, but I work as a lawyer for uh, maybe five years, something like that. And then I changed to financial market. Um, mm -hmm. And I work like 10 years in financial market. And on this uh, three of these last 10 years, I started doing angel investments. Um, so that was uh, my first contact with startups. So I first became a startup uh, investor and then a, a founder. And I think um, it was a little, uh, maybe a little luck, uh, but uh, the first investment I made, the very first was uh, Kintonda which is a huge yeah. uh, startup yeah. or company from, from Brazil. And um, so since then, my career um, like uh, went two paths. One as a, an investor, which I am still doing this, but it's like one or two investments each year since 2012. And um, I also started, uh, uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneur journey. So I founded a craft beer from, from Rio de Janeiro uh, with some partners. Where you are um, based, by the way, right? Yeah, in, in, in Rio, exactly. Um, and then I moved to, to startup uh, 2018. So I started mm -hmm. as a founder of uh, Sling Hub, which is a, a startup. Um, so, you know, um, I think now I am very connected to the ecosystem because I can see a little of two um, two sides of the the ecosystem, you know, as an investor and also as an entrepreneur. As entrepreneur. Um, exactly. And also for two years, I was uh, the president of Gavia Angels, mm -hmm. which is an angel club or an angel syndicate based uh, in Rio and Sao Paulo, um, it, which is the oldest in Brazil. Um, and one of the largest. So, it, you know, I, I learned a lot with a lot, uh, with other investors there. That's 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 really impressive, uh, and uh, also the background and the move that you that you made. Maybe exploring that a little bit. So, why did you decide to kind of leave the financial markets and and become an entrepreneur and an angel investor? Uh, almost at the same time, uh, it seems that you became first an angel investor and then uh, an entrepreneur and now a founder of uh, also a VC packet company uh, that you want to to close uh, across the region. And um, what was the motivation, the why, what did you want to change in your life maybe at the time, right? So um, one very good thing about uh, angel investment is that you can be an investor while working in a company. Right, good point. Um, so uh, in 2011, 2012, I was uh, doing well in, in where I worked and uh, I didn't want to leave the place. Um, right. So the, what I thought is I want to learn uh, more about um, startups and entrepreneurship and these kind of things. So I had 
you know, three options, uh, leave the, where I was working, mm -hmm. um, you know, do like a, an MBA or something like this or invest. So I had these three options and in my opinion, uh, I did a very, you know, in my life, I, I did wrong a lot of times, but this was a very good decision um, because of course it's expensive because you have to, to pay to invest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But the learning that I acquired with that and um, in the practical world, let's say like this, it was, it was huge. And without, uh, you know, I, I was still working and still making some money and I was able to learn a little about entrepreneurship. So my basic motivation when I started to invest was not to multiply my money. Um, right. It was to learn. So mm -hmm. I want to learn and I will spend. That was the idea. I will spend some money investing in five, 10 companies. And with that, I will learn some things with brilliant people. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that was the most direct way I, I thought of doing that. And um, two, three years uh, after I started doing investment, um, I said, I want to be an entrepreneur. And then I left mm -hmm. the place I was working. And then I started full time as a, a you know, a founder. founder. Amazing. And this is an inspiration also for, for the ones who want to get more involved with, uh, with the ecosystem and don't know why. And as you said, uh, enjoy what they are doing and are not ready yet to move to the other side or to be too adventurous at this stage. And uh, it's nice because you were not looking for the money, but you still were were, were able was you were able to to do very good investments and to have a good return on investment. Almost invest in an MBA that gave you not only the lessons learned but also uh, some return. So, uh, great decision, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. it was very good. And I think the uh, what made some investments because I also invested in Havelo which is a, uh, you know, a huge company from, from Brazil. And I think the, like one aspect of my investments is I, I always look very deeply in the team mm -hmm. because I still want to invest in people that I will learn from them. Right. So, um, you know, going back to this topic, like my main motivation was I, I want to learn. So when I was, uh, when someone was pitching to me, in my head was what I will learn with this, with this person. Right. So if the person has like a career, you know, um, in the same level as mine, uh, it, it's not good because I will not, I will not learn a lot. It will not so the well. investments I made, like Kim Fonda, Hevelo, they, they are amazing founders. You know, since the beginning, you, it's, it was very easy to see that they were outliers. And I right. didn't know if the business was going to do well or not, but I, I was pretty sure that they were amazing. Like these are brilliant guys and, you know, I will learn something from them. And I, I think that made some investments um, uh, did well. And also, you know, I, I made 14 investments and, Mm -hmm. In the middle of this path, I, I changed it like this thesis. So mm -hmm. I said, now I will invest in ideas that I like, for example. And then those business did not good. So um, oh, now I advice. came back to the original idea, like 90% mm -hmm. of what I look is, uh, you know, are these things brilliant? Because I invest in the very first moment of the, the right. startup. So it's like an evaluation of the team, you know? Yeah. So uh, almost at uh, PPT stage, right? So pre-product, pre-revenue, uh, almost at yeah. idea stage, maybe a small MVP and the first validation of the market, understanding if the market will react well uh, to, the, to, the, to the solution that they are presenting to, to solve the problem uh, for the market. So th that is kind of what you would highlight so when you have invested or when you when you have focused yourself on identifying the best teams and the best founders 
you did better than when you went for a more sophisticated thesis around certain industries, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that um, like the best uh, way to invest for a very early uh, investor exactly. is to evaluate a lot the team. But as the startup um, grows, then you have to understand a lot of metrics. So for right. example, if you are investing, I don't know, $5 million, $10 million, yeah. of course, the CEO is important. Um, but the business has its own life. So if something happens to the CEO, the business will uh, survive this. And uh, I think metrics is more important. So what have you done? Show me if you are a marketplace, where is your GMV right. and these kind of things. And these are not relevant, uh, not very relevant, in my opinion, yeah. if you are on the very, you know, in the very beginning of your startup. Of course. So it's kind of angel pre-seed stage. Uh, it's, it, of course, it's much more about the team and their vision and their capacity to execute uh, on on that on that dream um, and then seed uh, especially it's from Series A uh, onwards the metric starts playing a much more important role. Uh, of course, it needs to be aligned with the vision. They still have to, have to be able to have a thesis about how they will build an hundred million business. Uh, yeah. If it is kind of the the VC game that they are in, uh, because there are some angels that also invest in other companies that are not trying to go into into the VC uh, path, right? Uh, but, yeah. but definitely, that's kind of the evolution. And it's important to say that um, team is always important. But of course, at early stage, you only have the team to evaluate <laughs> much less uh, metrics to um, to validate yeah. so it, it makes it even more important about the, the grit the resilience the the why they are doing what they are doing what are the gar the guarantees that they, they will not give up uh, at the first adversity that uh, comes to them right so that's kind of what we need to validate at that stage, and then you you move it uh, as you said to to lead uh, to president of Gavia Angels, uh, one of the oldest um, and largest uh, angel clubs or syndicates uh, in Brazil, with um, with presence in Rio and uh, in São Paulo. Uh, what has been your experience? And again, why did you do, did you move into mm -hmm. being the president of an angel? Love and the angel syndicate after starting investing as a as an angel. Yeah, um, one one um, thing about angel investments back then. Uh, so I was uh, the president in two thousand eighteen and two thousand nineteen for two years mm -hmm. roughly. Um, so first, it was not a full time job. Uh, it was right. something that I was doing alongside with with Sling. Um, and it was like, I was very proud because um, I still am the youngest president ever uh, from, from Gavia Angels. Reflection. And uh, like mainly the, you know, the angels that participate in Gavia are, you know, very well-rounded executives. So they mm -hmm. are um, not only older than me, but more experienced. They have more experience, you know. They, Someone that work as CFO of a public company in Brazil. Right. So for me, too, I was I was very uh, proud, and I learned a lot with with them. Um, and but one one thing that I learned, you know, uh, participate in all the meetings, you know, from from Gavia in these two years, is that you know each startup has uh, each investor has a way to evaluate startup so um you know the way gavia works is uh a startup uh, do a pitch you know mm -hmm. it, it has a screening before but then the one that passed the screening goes to you know to a physical event and they mm -hmm. present um their pitch and after that there is a discussion between uh the the members and in that discussion was clear that each investor, not each investor, but there, you know, there is a way to evaluate startup and it's not like a hard rule. 
So mm-hmm. it, it like almost always some investors like a company and some investor didn't like a company. And the reason maybe is the same reason. So for mm-hmm. example, uh, this company has a real huge, huge revenue, but mm-hmm. they are not growing. Let's say they are uh, flat. Right. Um, for me, that's not a good sign. But for some investors, they say, but that's a huge company. You know, so yeah. um, it, it's it's crazy to see that. And it, it, it's also a good sign because if you are a startup founder, uh, you, you can, that's a good sign because maybe you talk to 10 investors, but they have the same way to evaluate startup. But that, that's just, just bad luck. So if you talk yeah. to 10 more, maybe you find someone with the same pitch, with the same thing, and they like your business. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like a, a learning for me because I, I thought that the, the way I evaluate startup was like a, a, deep, a default, you know, a, a pattern, mm-hmm. but it, it is not. I think that on later stage, um, it's not that wild, I will say, but for uh, angel investment, it's, there is not a rule to evaluate and, and it's not a right way because some investor in Gaia did very well also doing right. very different the way I do. So there is not a, a right way. Um, but I, I think one important thing is to maintain consistent. Right. <laughs> so the, for example, I, I, I started away, then I did another thing, then I came back. So then you you lose in the middle something. You also but made some it was, experiments, right? Yeah. And uh, trying yeah. to kind of see if there was another opportunities or another opportunities for improvement on your thesis. And you have validated some experiments. It didn't work uh, bad, or better than the way you were uh, doing before. So you came back to, to your original thesis. Yeah. So that was, uh, I mean, uh, very good experience. Now I am a board member in Gavia Angels, and I have a good relation with, uh, you know, all the uh, some, some members. Not all. It's growing a lot faster. Um, but now I, I, I mainly do like, uh, I would say, like solo investments. So it's very opportunistic investments, um, small, small checks. But you know, it was a, a very, it was very good for my career also. To it helped yeah. me a lot, you know, also with fundraise and everything to be like the president of, of, of Gavia, and understand what are the best practices and the perspectives and approaches of different angels. And and again, it seems that what you are talking about it's also related a, a lot about the background of the angel, right? What has been the career, the the past investments that that angel has made what worked, what didn't work. Uh, sometimes even some experience that didn't work very well might make the angel be a little bit uh, away of certain uh, opportunities because they had a bad uh, experience in, in the past. And curious to see that you came from financial markets, but there are other people that are coming from an operating experience, but in maybe in large corporates uh, and also don't have a, a clue about starting up and want to learn, want to be... Uh, involved with maybe some of those angels are coming from being previous founders and uh, also wanted to be part of it so the the backgrounds of those people are are very different and that's the the beauty of it of, of it as well so you can learn a lot from each other and also add value to to in in different ways to the to the founder uh, or to the startup that you are investing in so that's that's a great point so let's move into Sling Up. So your your current uh, passion and your startup and uh, where you are now uh, in the in the in the driver's seat and uh, and leading the the startup. So what what is Sling Up? Uh, where are you at, at this stage? What is the size of the company, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Yeah. Um... So we are a data company. We collect data about Latin American startups and we are very focused. So um, we only collect data about startups that are based in um, Latin America. And so, and we do that to facilitate or you know, to make it easier for a large company and investor to find a startup. And um, they, you know, they hire us or they, you know, uh, mm-hmm partner with us 
mainly to find startups to acquire, you know, to do an MA or to invest or to hire this company as a, as a provider, as a service provider. Right. And so we are a company with a um, similar business model with um, a company called CB Insights. Um, mm -hmm. But we are very, um, you know, focused on Latin America. And so our main uh, competitive advantage, uh, you know, comparing to CB Insights and PitchBook is we have right. more profound or more reliable data than they have because we only look to actually we look to seven com okay, seven really countries so. in latin america yeah. the, the main countries um and they look to two, 250 countries so they, they look at the whole world <laughs> so um so we have you know deeper data um and that makes easier for a large company or an investor to find uh you know, a, a startup to invest, acquire, or to to hire, um, and we have like um, uh, uh, th this data is so in some cases is so uh, uh, deep that it can uh, you know uh, eliminate the time of uh, startup analysis. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you are looking for a fintech and you want to to found a fintech that has a revenue of X and has a company growth of why and you have a lot of filters with private data that includes also private data mm -hmm. that makes uh, not not it's it's not that you are going to make a decision to invest only with data but the the you know the opposite is true so maybe you look to some data and say this is not for me and and we are very good in that but the the way you structure like your screening in sling hub like with a lot of data and we have like features to uh, monitor like the, the evolution of mm -hmm. this company. It's, it's, it takes a lot of the effort and time um, to have like reliable and very uh, frequently updated data. So we, have, we are a data company. Uh, we are a yeah. startup. We have 20 people. Uh, we have tech people, design, product, marketing. Mm -hmm. And we are for two and a half years uh, doing only this with very focus and we have like great companies like google amazon or we have some vcs also some public public companies in brazil and yeah com the company is is growing as the ecosystem in in brazil it took some hit now but um like I, I would say that we are the main player uh, doing exactly this, you know, capturing data about Latin American startup. Exactly. So it's kind of uh, seed stage, pre-series A. Uh, that's kind of the stage where Sling Up is at the moment, right? Yeah, we did a, a round, um, like a pre-seed, I would say, uh, yeah. like $400,000, something mm -hmm. around that. Um, that was like two years ago um, mm -hmm. when we have like little little revenue the company has grown and uh, now and we we intend to do a, a, another round another round. round yeah yeah got it sounds great and uh, something very interesting that you were talking about and I I started to see also some uh, VC funds also having a thesis completely based on on data so they are not taking uh, startup pitches or decks anymore, uh, and they are not taking kind of uh, inbound um, decks. They are going completely outbound based on on data. That's their thesis. Uh, at first, it was difficult for me to understand what what were kind of their new thesis of investment, but it's becoming more and more popular. And kind of platforms like yours are super important to kind of adopt um, that approach of uh, of investment. And of course, for the ones who, who still um, accept inbound requests uh, and and do both inbound and, and outbound, it's critical to to be informed about the data, about tracking what what is going on, and ensuring that um, nothing is out of the radar because uh, there are so many moving parts in the startup ecosystem that sometimes it's a little bit hectic and overwhelming to to be on top of everything right um, yeah cool I, I would like to add something to this um yeah 
we have a like a, a theory, let's say like this, that um, for example, the the those type of investments that you were saying, like uh, VC VCs that are based that base their decision on data, like mainly on data. Yeah. Um, this is not the main uh, like. I would say that one percent or two yeah. percent the, yeah. the VCs they are do like this. Still, yeah, they are outliers, of course. And, and um, again, it's just to pick the companies. It, it doesn't mean that they invest in the companies that they pick. So the, the process of picking the companies is completely data driven, and it kind of says oh, this company, according to our uh, criteria, our investment is in terms of data, is a company that we should uh, get to know more. And, and then the process starts. They meet with the founders, they get to know the founders, they do the due diligence, they start the relationship, et cetera, et cetera. But they only pick companies that are according to their data-driven uh, investment thesis. They don't do outbound to other companies that they are shiny on, on the press or something, or they don't take also in, inbound requests. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And and. I think that once we have more platforms that are, you know, focused on a specific region or a specific country of the world, uh, maybe we will see more, you know, this type of uh, investment based on data. You know, because if, if you want to invest in a company uh, like using mainly data just to do like these first steps, you need to have deeper data it's not like exactly. uh, how much the company raised you need to have like metrics and you know a lot of stuff um and then it's difficult to do this type of to have this type of data for 250 countries um right. so the way we see is if we, if you want to have like an overview of the market and understand you know general numbers and etc it's it's okay to have like uh no high level data but if you want to go deeper you have to have like very a lot of information about each startup and it should be very reliable and um i think other platforms like sling will will start to see that opportunity you know to be very niche on a specific country or region there is another one there is very niche in um uh england united kingdom actually is called bohurst there is a, it's a similar approach with sling so they only check like four countries they only check four countries mm -hmm. and they are very reliable data about those those countries so you right. know if you want to understand that market deeply you know you have to partner with them and we hope that other you know other you know startups start doing this in specific regions of country of the world and um by doing that the way we analyze startup uh will become more similar with the way public public companies are you know uh, analyze it so that's that's our dream like um you know there is a um a, a, a movie with i, I mm -hmm. actually I forgot the name in english now I think is the in Saint Portuguese. Um, yeah. I, I will remember. I think it's a yeah. it's a film with Brad Pitt about baseball. So the way right. that they use data to understand all the players and they started to make decision they, that that mm -hmm. was not obvious, you know. Got it. So, for example, a lot of people uh, when they want to invest now, they 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 look at even when you are in the late stage, for example, where this um, founder study. So it's an Ivy League company, this is good. But then if you look at the whole, a lot of data, maybe this is not the main thing. And you can find other variables that are more important than that. So the movie, it's uh, not exactly about this, but you know, it's very, it's an inspiration for us because right. back then in baseball, everyone used the same, thing you know to analyze and then there is a guy that came from statistics that said oh you are looking at the wrong thing look at all this data that we are collecting now and that's the way to go and then a small team with no resources you know um almost um uh won like the the major league in, in baseball 
right and uh, i will try to course, find here the name yeah you have you have been tracking the the the, the latin american ecosystem now for for the last four years with uh, with sling uh, how how do you see what are your insights on on the evolution of the LATAM ecosystem? Is there any numbers that you'd like to to share with the community? So, what are your thoughts? And yeah. the data. Um, so I, <laughs> and yeah, what yeah. tells the I data? Just, right? Yeah, I just um, look here the name of the movie. It's called Moneyball. 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 Exactly. Very well known. Yeah. Um, so about the the Latin America ecosystem and the data, um, like one main uh, thing that is important to analyze is how relevant is uh, the Latin America ecosystem comparing to the world. Um, and like, this is, I would say like a North Star metric to see if our region are mm -hmm. doing well, because we are growing year after year. Right. 2022, uh, we, except anything huge happens, we will not grow comparing to 2021. Yeah. But uh, each year is going uh, from 2015 to 2021. Each year is growing, the Latin American is growing. Uh, when I say um, it's growing, of course, it's not all metrics, but you no know, fundraising, uh, number of M&As, uh, unicorns that are, mm -hmm you know, uh, coming up, uh, like the tendency of all those numbers is going up. And then in 2022, uh, it's mm -hmm. very clear that it's not going up. And um, but you we have some a, idea. A flat or a, a decline? Uh, a, decline. Kind of a decline. A decline, okay. Yeah, in 2000, um, 2022 will be like uh, 2020 to be oh, something oof. like this. That's a huge yeah. correction. Like a two years. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there are some good news about that. There are some good news. But um, so this is like the, the main um, data to analyze an ecosystem is how well is this ecosystem doing against the world? So Latin mm -hmm. America in 2015 was roughly, 2016, sorry, it was roughly 0.5% uh, mm -hmm. of the world in funding. Mm -hmm. Um, so now the money invested in the world in startup only 0.5 came from uh, Latin America. If you go to 2021, both this ecosystem grew, but uh, Latin America uh, grew much more. Um, mm -hmm. So we are now in 2021, 2.8%. Yep. So, so we are more relevant. We are more relevant. Why that happened? Um, mainly because a lot of uh, foreign money, you know, money from SoftBank, money from right. Andres and Norovitz, you know, huge VCs, Sequoia, they started to invest in Brazil. So roughly 70% of the money invested in Brazil and Latin America come from uh, investors that are not based in Latin America mm -hmm. and that it's new uh, it, it's not that in 2016 that didn't happen but it was only small firms doing investment That's and then 2018-19 it started very strongly um, and also a lot of VCs in Brazil are also doing investments Mm -hmm. um, and that Brazil and Latin America, and that help us help the ecosystem. But um, if you, but the main uh, like the main contribution of Brazilian VCs is the number of deals because they invest earlier. Right. Uh, and of course, if they if, you, if we don't have local investment, we will not have like huge startups. You know, startups in Series B, C, D, they, they need previous investment to get to those stage. And um, now we are in a position where a lot of VCs are doing like exits and they have money to, you know, continue to invest in early startup. So, um, and so like it's a five, per, five times or also almost six times growth 
you know, we, we grew six times more. Latin America grew six times more 2016 comparing to, to, to 2021 against right. the world. So it's we now are in roughly 3%. And we think that this um, number will grow more, uh, like we'll have 5%, maybe 6% of, of the world. Um, and why we, why, we think, why we think that? Mainly because there is a lot of um, dry powder in, in mm -hmm. Latin America. So there are a lot of money that are ready to be right. deployed. deployed. So we have a very... Um, you know, unique uh, situation now with the whole uh, world situation, uh, whole uh, world ecosystem. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we don't think that this will last, for example, three years. Um, I, we think that the investment will return. So we are working with a number that twenty twenty three, in you know, in our guess, I would say it will be something like 2021 in terms of investment uh, in mm -hmm. Latin America. And, but the main difference will, that, will be that the valuations will not be the same. That's what we, you know, we, we feel. Um, right. And why is that? Um, because of course it's, it's getting harder for VC to raise more money. So they have money you know, in their, their bank, let's say like this, a lot of VCs are uh, with money ready to be deployed, but it's not easier to get more money. So they will stay more conscious and more, you know, uh, they will be more careful to invest, you know, more due diligence. All of this will not be like before. Um, mm -hmm. So there is a, a correction in our opinion that is going to, is, is happening already. Um, but we are, we see, we feel that 2023 will be like 2021 or, you know, a little more, a little less. That's what right. we are, we are working. And I still see a lot of potential, right? I think that everyone that is passionate about this ecosystem clearly sees that, um, uh, there is the potential at least to become 10% uh, of the, of the global investment. It should be that way uh, it's a huge region a huge market with huge uh, opportunities and, and kind of we see what is happening in southeast asia and it's also an inspiration for for latin to to yeah. be closer to to those numbers and if we think about the main blocks kind of the us europe uh, china india southeast asia latin is definitely one of those one two three four five six one of those six blocks and of course Africa we are always asking ourselves when it will come to to the global scene we also know that there is huge opportunities but clearly uh, Latam is uh, is already showing that uh, that has the potential to to get closer to to the podium and, and start winning the medals let's say in a kind of Olympic Games uh, analogy right yeah yeah and we are hoping that happens. Since exactly. Are, you know, That's what we are working on. American, <laughs> especially from Brazil, we, we, we hope we hope that that, that happens. Um, we will not think it will be fast, but it, it's growing and it's a region, like you said, with a lot of problems, with a huge population. So there is a lot of opportunities here. Yeah, and definitely Brazil with the 200 million plus uh, population, and then Mexico with the 120 million. Uh, so the only those two countries, we are talking about 300 million plus, uh, which is almost the population of the of the US. Of course, the the GDP per capita is uh, is different, and the yeah. the sophistication of the problems are different. But anyway, uh, that's also as we were talking a huge opportunity for um, improving the gap. And uh, there are a lot of, of, of things that can be solved that in the US can, can't be solved anymore. So the, the kind of problems that we are solving there uh, are a little bit different. Uh, and, and the competition is, is much higher uh, as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
So just just inspiring the ones who are who are listening about about Latam. That uh, definitely, and I'm not saying this to to be kind of kind in in the show, but uh, I I really believe that uh, we we should have a correction, uh, not in the in the wrong perspective, but in the positive perspective. Getting this the 0. 0.5 to the 2.8 to the kind of. 10%. Do you believe that this is possible according to your financial markets background and your analytical and, uh, and all the, the work that you do on a daily basis with, with Sling? Uh, I'm sure that you are super um, deep with, with the numbers. I'm, I'm, of course, much more inspirational uh, uh, about what it should be, but, but you know better uh, how it works. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's possible. Uh, it's very difficult to say when or if right. this will happen, like a 10%, it, it will be like a three times grow from now. Uh, but and the other regions the way are also we, growing a lot. So yeah, and other regions are also growing. Um, what we feel is uh, it will not grow as fast as it was growing in US specifically. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there are startups for everything everyone already use not exactly. everyone like the adoption of technology it's huge there exactly so there are less problems or less intensive problems to be tackled and less opportunity so each more time investors from us wants to invest Outside. wants to invest in other parts of the of the world and we see already this happens in europe also like yeah. europe it's a a very old, let's say like this ecosystem. So people want to get globally. Um, and we don't see the opposite. We don't see, for example, a firm in Brazil. Um, it happens, but it's not the main, you know, the main pattern. Uh, a company in Brazil or a company in Africa wants to invest in US. So it, right. the, the money is flowing that way, you know, outside exactly. US, outside Europe. Um, China, we are not, we are not, we are not sure, um, but you know, Latin America and Africa, it's our main bet that this this two will grow more uh, proportionally uh, than the other regions. Right, and it's curious to see what you are saying. It's truly really important for the development of the ecosystem, which which is that the local markets are able to increase and feed the earlier stages of funding because at those early stages it's much more difficult to get an international investor. Because again, as we were speaking in the beginning about the the lessons learned as angel investors, pre seed investors, uh, even seed investors, it, it's it's a lot about the team. Uh, and the vision of the team so if if they are not a little bit nowadays remotely it is there are some outliers but still it is important in early stages to be a little bit closer to to the market so local investors would would always or at least in in the current scenario would always invest more um, than international investors then of course after series a um we have a, a larger pool of investors that would be interested. And in some cases, if we also want to expand to other regions, it would be good to have an investor from those regions also to open doors and to help us uh, expand into, um, into that region. So that's a great sign. And, and I see there is a lot of angels already in, in Brazil and it keeps increasing also. Uh, coming yeah. from from different approaches, as I said, not only founders that have started their own companies, but also professionals like like yourself that now are uh, you are a founder as well, but uh, executives, uh, etc. Which is which is an amazing sign. And now it's all about also uh, having those uh, angels getting uh, those investors getting more and more educated to help even more those founders to to build global businesses and uh, and also having more more money to invest because they are showing a great track record. So LPs would like also to invest in them uh, because they yeah. know better the region as you, uh, as you said. Yeah. I also know that you have launched uh, an, uh, an exciting initiative uh, that is being very popular these days in, in the press in, in Brazil, which is the, the startup index, but you, this is something very new. I, I'm also in the WhatsApp group where I receive all the reports from from sling and that's the way i also got to know you and um, so what is this initiative about why did you launch what 
how how people can yeah. can see it. Nice. Um, so we um, we wanted to you know have like a number, like a, a very uh, you know unique number that show how the ecosystem uh, in Brazil is doing. It's important to to explain that Brazil is roughly seventy percent of Latin mm -hmm. America, 65, 70% of Latin America ecosystem. Um, so we wanted first to have a Brazil, but we will expand to have like an index for Latin America. And mm -hmm. um, for us, like mainly the way that a ecosystem or, you know, a country is evaluated in the ecosystem is how much they raised money. Um, so, why I, I, I was telling here uh, this number, because we don't have reliable data about the world, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of variables about the world. So the main number everyone has is how much startups raise it or how much was invested in startup. Mm -hmm. But this is not, in our opinion, enough to show if a country or a specific, uh, you know, ecosystem is doing well. So um, we made a, a, a you know an index with seven variables. I will not tell each one, but like the main one. So uh, how much startup raise it is of course one variable. The number of rounds. So if you know in a specific month there is a hundred rounds, and in the other there is three hundred rounds, it's right. different. You know, it's it's more relevant in the in the in the last one. You know, the number of new unicorns. And then you have like these seven variables and um, the way we weighted, you know, each variables, each variable of this is, we came back to 2015 and see which one was, which ones was, were more rare. Mm -hmm. So the more uh, rare uh, variable is, for example, a startup do an IPO, this is very rare. So this works a lot, you know, this has a lot of weight in the index. So, but if a startup raise a million dollars, that's not the same weight as an IPO. Um, so we, you know, we did this index and it's open right. in our platform. You can see each month what happens. There is, you know, a little explanation why, you know, the index is growing up or down. And, and we did that inspired, um, with like the indexing NASDAQ, you know, in Brazil, there is Ibo Vespa. So you can go there and see if like those pool of companies are doing well or not. Um, and um, we chose these seven variables based on the relevance, you know, each uh, uh, variable should, must be very relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, and also if we believe, if we link believe, uh, that the data we have represents, you know, at least 90% of what happens in the real world. So mm -hmm. explaining what is this, uh, this index is different, for example, uh, from NASDAQ, because the, NAS the NASDAQ index is very precise. You know, it's, they have mm -hmm. like a math and you always have, you know, in real time, all the data available and you can see, you know, in the three decimals, you know how how the 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 index is performing we are not that precise because it's you know it's not public companies so sometimes the company takes one two months to announce the round right. um so we have to be very careful to not choose a variable that we are not confident that we have at least 90 percent of what happens um but uh, in our opinion, it's not perfect. It's of course it's not perfect. It, it will not be, uh, but it's as closest as possible a metric to see uh, to answer this question: Is Brazilian ecosystem doing well or not? Improving. And then um, it's improving or, or or not, and why? Why it's oh, so? Right. M and A is going down, so this affects the ecosystem. Uh, you know, the number of first investments made by a, a VC in Brazil. This is a very important metric for us. The exactly. very first time a VC investment in a company, it's different from the other investments because a new player is coming. So yeah. if this is declining, that, that is showing something. Is this growing? 
it's, yeah. it's also shown from some yeah um so again, in a, in a recession, it's open and yeah in a recession is is normal that uh, those investors uh, come back to the domestic market and become a little bit more conservative right uh, but definitely sorry sorry to interrupt yeah no no yeah yeah that, that that's it and um yeah i mean um the idea was was that we don't we don't know uh, any uh, current index that is doing the same as we are doing around the world. So we innovative. were very careful. Yeah, we, we are very careful in building this. So we partner with an association of uh, Brazil, uh, venture capitalist, mm -hmm. which is called Emerging uh, VC Fellow. They have, uh, I think, 50 uh, analysts with, uh, you know, well, this good VCs from Brazil. And there were a lot of discussions with that, like how we should weight uh, each variable, which mm -hmm. variable we will use. And we also talked with large companies. We showed them before, you know, to see mm -hmm. this will work for you. And they say, right. well, we also show to startup. So we have um, some validation about the ecosystem and we hope uh, people will adopt this. That's our... Uh, not only in Brazil, but we also have like maybe other other platforms around the world who start to do an index similar to us. It, it will make us very, very proud. And also one thing we are doing uh, first about uh, Brazil, uh, but also we are doing a sector. So, for example, in our platform, you can check how Brazilian fintechs are doing, you know, uh, yeah. you know, m a unicorns and agri-techs, retail tech, you know. Yeah. For the main um, sectors in Brazil, you can check that that info. That, that's great to see your kind of what we have covered on this show, kind of or your story, your background coming also into being a fuel to innovation at Sling, right? So your your financial markets approach, uh, bringing innovation into the VC ecosystem, into the tech ecosystem, and and the start uh, the startup ecosystem with the index. Uh, in general, per country and also per per vertical, uh, as you were saying. Well done, congratulations for for the initiative. Thank you. And uh, before going into into the last questions of the show, where we ask a quick answer and and do, uh, and our guests give us a, a quick a quick question and uh, give give us a quick answer. Uh, anything else that you'd like to highlight about uh, the Latam ecosystem? Um, I would say, um, I think the main, uh, things we, we curved is like, there's a lot of dry pounder in Brazil, a lot of new investments. Uh, it's a trend, uh, also family offices in Brazil that they are not focused in startup, but we are seeing like a, a very, it's becoming very intensive for a family office to have like one analyst that is focused on, on startup. And, um, you know, we are on the first wave, it's very new, um, like few companies, few startups in Brazil did IPO, uh, but now they have like some money, they are acquiring other startups. That, that's, it's becoming very intensive. Our like tech companies, uh, acquiring tech companies, and we are also like in the first wave, I would say of exits. So mm -hmm. a lot of companies are right. being acquired and investors are receiving money and maybe they will take a part of this money and go, go back, you know, and, and put back. And um, yeah, I think that, that those That's are the main things. That's the point. Okay. So which, which also shows that the, the, the the most conservative investors are always are also considering to enter the game and are more interested to know more about the game, which is always a good sign. Which means that more money uh, will come uh, into the category, uh, which would be great to to solve great problems and to to move humanity forward in 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 that region and in in other regions. That, and and at the end of the day, we should not forget this uh, as well. Right, the, all this industry, it's all about solving problems that make uh, lives easier for, for everyone in the, in the world and uh, in the region. So I, I think that yeah. it, this also inspires us for everything that we do 
on a, on a daily basis. So let's go into into the last segment of of the show, Joel. Uh, if you would have an opportunity to to meet yourself for for a coffee uh, or for a geladinha, as you, as you say in in, in Brazil, uh, what advice would you offer to your uh, younger self? Um, I would say to start a business earlier, like younger. Got it. Like this, this. Start earlier. This is like, I think uh, you will learn a lot if you start a business. Uh, and if you start early, there is no problem because you can come back. If things don't do well, you can come back and, and work, you know, for, for a company. There is no problem. And your resume will be much, you know, uh, much more relevant. You know, if you start a company. And what are you the most proud of on your journey so far? Um, I would say that the people I work with, uh, mainly because, of course, some people work in, in Sling and left, but we have, with almost all of them, we have good connection. So uh, even when we decided, you know, to let people go, uh, they still want to be you know, uh, near us. So I, I would say the main thing is, the, you know, how much I learn with them and how much I think uh, we are still close with people that we are not, it's not currently part of Sling. Mm-hmm. That, that means a lot for us. Once Sling, Sling forever. Uh, worst advice ever received? Um, I'd say to do more things at the same time, you know, at the same, uh, when we were uh, starting the company, we are very, we were very specific and we are, we still are. And, you know, some uh, investors, not current investors, they say you should open more to have like a, a higher, uh, you know, a market size. Mm-hmm. Um, and that we were, we, we talked this internally and we said, no, we, we should stay with this and let's do this before first be very good in one specific thing and then we think about uh, you know doing more stuff so i would say like to, to focus focus on specific uh things and do very well those things right and now the resources uh favorite book it can be business or non-business as you wish yeah i i would have to say two uh, so mm-hmm. Outliers from Malcolm Gladwell mm-hmm. and also um, another one, which is the inspiration for the name of our company, we see, which is Davi uh, versus uh, Goliath. So Sling is the weapon uh, that Davi used to take Goliath. I so didn't it's know like that. A, wow. Yeah, yeah. Sling is like a, a, a weapon. It's a very um, rudimentary weapon. Got it. Very easy to build, but very strong. You know, very, very efficient. Right. Even if if we do the um, the podcast in English, is not my native language, so I'm always learning uh, new words. And uh, great story about about Sling. Great surprise for for the end of the show. And now the favorite movie or series. Is-